On his way to giving this argument for the existence of God, Descartes starts by classifying his thoughts. He says, what I ought to do first is look at my thoughts and ask which of them can be true or false. And so he starts out that way. And he ends up saying, all of my thoughts are one of three kinds. They're either ideas, which are like ideas of specific things, or uh, they could sometimes be general ideas. So, but these are basically like parts of my thinking that could be expressed as nouns or as noun phrases. So they include things like my idea of a horse, my idea of a unicorn, my idea of justice, my idea of perfection, and so on. So I, these are all like individual things. They, they're not expressed as sentences. They're rather uh, expressed as, again, nouns or noun phrases. And they can be abstract or specific. They can be, um, you know, I can have an idea of uh, a flock of geese rather than just a single goose. Um, so I can have an idea of groups. I can have an idea of, you know, um, you know, uh, yeah, multiple things rather than just a single thing. But they're all going to be able to be expressed as nouns or noun phrases. Others of my thoughts are volitions and affects. So volitions are basically acts of will or decision, uh, decision making or choice. So um, he, he thinks if we look inside ourselves, we'll see that, you know, we have this capacity to choose or we, we sort of making choices. Um, and we also undergo uh, emotions. So the, the affects are like different states of emotion, sadness, happiness, uh, know, uh, fear, anger, and so on. So some of my thoughts are affects, some are volitions, and some are judgments. Um, and now judgments are basically thoughts that could be expressed as declarative sentences. Um, earlier in some lectures on basic techniques of philosophy, I uh, defined the term claim as basically any, any, uh, Anything that any statement um, or any thought or belief that could be expressed as a declarative statement um, or a declarative statement that expresses a possible belief. That's basically the same thing as a judgment. Um, what I meant by belief there, uh, claims are like expressions of judgments. Basically, these are thoughts that take the form of declarative sentences. And only judgments can be, or, or judgments that express claims is another way to put it. Only judgments, Descartes concludes, can be true or false. Because if you look at like acts of will or uh, emotions, those things aren't true or false. They just are what they are. Uh, and likewise about ideas. Ideas are just like single things or groups of things. But because they're not part of a proposition, of a claim, of a statement, they, they themselves, by themselves, aren't true or false. Um, and so part of why this is important is this is Descartes coming to the point of saying, look, I, it's not that I was in error just by having ideas. I wasn't in error just by having emotions or by engaging in acts of will. Um, I was in error, or at least I wasn't in error about like, about, what is the case? I might be in kind of moral error through acts of will, but that's a different issue. But in error about what is true and false or what is the case. Um, I wasn't wrong about things with my ideas, volitions, and affects, but I, I could have been wrong about things in my judgments. And so um, judgments are especially important in terms of evaluating whether or not I could get the world right. Uh, or what it takes to get the world right in my thinking. On the other hand, um, right now what I know for certain is my own existence and myself, the I, is a kind of idea. And the idea of God also is an idea. So what we're going to hopefully know by the end of the Meditation 3 is that God exists. But God is an idea. And so 
uh, we need to look more closely at ideas in order to get a better sense of what it is that makes ideas uh, exist or not exist. What is it to say that some idea or the object of some idea exists? So we need to look at that more closely. So again, when I'm thinking about God, what I'm thinking about is an idea or what I'm, what I'm, I'm asking about one of my ideas, does it correspond to a real entity, something that really exists? Now, there are three possible sources of ideas, Descartes goes on to say. Uh, these can be innate, they can be adventitious, which means from outside sources. He doesn't say that directly, but that's basically what adventitious means. It means it comes to me through some process of experience with something that, that exists outside of me. Or ideas can be produced by me, okay? So what is the source of my various ideas? That's, a, that's the sort of question that's, rest, that's, that's raised here. Um, I have a whole lot of different ideas and uh, maybe formerly before I engage in the process of doubt that started meditation one, I made various assumptions about how they related to say objects outside of me and a, and the way that the world was and so on. So I had various assumptions about how my ideas were related to the rest of reality. But now I need to ask in a more refined way about how my ideas are related to the rest of reality because I only want to believe things that I can be absolutely certain about. I only want to believe things that I can rest on a solid foundation. And so I need to ask about my various ideas. Are they innate for each one? Is it innate? Is it adventitious? Has it, has it come about through some contact with outside influence? Or is it somehow produced by me? And if there really is an external world, and if there really is a God, then these things need to be from outside sources. They, that my ideas of them, I should say, need to be adventitious. So I need to find out if, if, if it's true that there is a God, then I need some kind of argument that my idea of God comes about adventitiously. That is, it comes about from contact with outside sources. And I need some kind of proof or argument that it comes from an outside source that is sufficiently like my idea of God that I can say that that God really exists. Okay, so it can't just have been produced by from out from any outside source, but it has to be produced from by an outside source that is matching to my idea that 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 basically has the same qualities that my idea of God has. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to say that this idea is an idea of a real existent thing outside of me. So this brings us to what could be written as a first premise of Descartes' argument for the existence of God. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically reconstruct his argument in Meditation 3. You uh, will read Meditation 3 and you can put together the argument if you want in your own way, but I'm, I'm going to put it together um, this way to try to highlight the main features. Uh, and uh, that will get, at least give you a framework for understanding this very important argument in Meditation 3, getting a handle on it.